I'm Dr. Mario Rutherford, Certified Functional Medicine Practitioner and Chiropractor. Dr. Randall Gates, Board Certified Chiropractic Neurologist, also a chiropractor. So today we're going to talk about an unavoidably controversial subject, and that is, do heavy metals cause autoimmune disease? And it's, uh, it's, and the reason I say that is I, I do all the intakes here, and uh, so I hear the patient's histories, and I hear what they've been through, and I hear what they've been told. We had a lot of patients that come in here uh, who've been through a ton of heavy metal stuff. By the time they get here, nothing happened. I have heard the stories of the person who's gotten mercury out of their mouth, and they got better. Um, and I've also seen way more uh, people coming in here with uh, neurological reactions from heavy metals and, and, and everything in between. So, uh, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a primary tool for some physicians. Um, there's just been a lot of research over, long, over, over I think, uh, at least the last five or six or eight or nine years. At least I know, like, uh, in, 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 in the thesis book, he even was already citing research on the fact that it wasn't good for everybody. Mm -hmm. Dr. Karazian, who wrote a book on brain. And, um, and so, so it's, it's, when I say it's kind of controversial, the people who hang on to it still seem to cling to it, to me, you know, as a primary uh, factor. Now there are also chelations that you can get online, chelations in the mail, um, and, and I'm not sure that, you know, that's a good thing to do without some sort of a background and information as to what you're getting into, maybe even a, an understanding of what can happen if you have certain uh, abnormalities that a lot of autoimmune patients have, like a bad blood brain barrier, bad gut barrier, bad lung barrier. Anyway, Dr. Gates is going to study our study. He's going to, he's going to talk about some of the new studies. And some of the things that we've seen here, we don't see a lot of heavy metal problems here. And we do primarily chronic pain. We do Lyme disease. We do fibromyalgia, peripheral neuropathy, chronic fatigue. We do all kinds of peripheral neuropathy. We do all these things that heavy metals are supposed to. Mm -hmm. to I, I, I honestly only remember one case where we had the gal chelated for heavy metals. And it was like a miracle. Mm -hmm. And it was like a miracle. It was like one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But we see like six to ten new patients every week <laughs> and right. every every week all year long for i, I think it's dr gates is ninth year here they going year. into the ninth going year. into the ninth year here so i and and we had pretty consistently decent results in chronic pain mm -hmm. and uh so we're going to share with you our observations and dr gates is going to share with you his understanding of the, the most most uh, recent uh, understandings of the uh, of the summation of, of his experience and research on heavy metals and their uh, and their potential. No, that's the wrong. And, and and whether they're involved or not in in, in autoimmune problems. So. It's a very yeah, those, <laughs> very sticky subject. <laughs> well, you know what? It, yeah. it it needs to be unstuck. I'm with you. I'm with you. So here's the reality. You have a lot of alternative practitioners out there who are doing heavy metal treatments or doing chelation treatments, whether it be taking chlorella, alpha lipoic acid, or taking IVs of chelation treatments, 20, 30, 40 of these treatments at a time in order to rid the body of these heavy metals. Now, the studies on the association between heavy metals and autoimmune disease came from Brazil, and they were looking at miners down there. Now, there are environmental regulations for mining practices. Uh, when these studies were done, I believe were not as stringent as like what we have here in the US. So just know that generally in the Amazon, mercury levels are much higher than they are, let's say, in the United States, probably because some of the mining, the water, you can imagine. There's a lot of in general, in general, just in general. But they looked at these miners who are, you know, have their hands and vats of mercury every day, and they found that they had a mildly higher percentage of autoimmune disease. I believe it was around 15% of them had non-organ specific autoimmune markers. It's still relatively low, and these are guys who are hands in the immersed. And then you juxtapose that with your average American who then goes into an alternative doctor's practice, gets a heavy metal test, you have heavy metals, oh my gosh, because that, that's causing your Hashimoto's thyroiditis, that's causing your lupus, that's causing this problem, that problem, this problem. 
And the basically the problem with that paradigm is that when they do the research, they find that all of us have heavy metal burden here in the United States. If you do a pre and post provocative mm -hmm. challenge, mm -hmm. meaning there are different ways to test for heavy metals. You can just take a blood sample and say, okay, Dr. Rutherford, do you have mercury floating around in your blood? You can just do a urine test where Dr. Rutherford urinate into this jug and let's see how many heavy metals are coming out of your system. And then we can also do a test where he would urinate in the jug. And then he takes a pill that's a chelating agent to see how much gets pulled out of his body. And then he urinates in the jug and we see how much is there. And, you know, it's, how would you relate it? It's almost like the magic trick, you know, yeah. at the car. I mean, it's, oh my gosh, it's there. Plus we are heavy metals. I mean, we're not we mercury, heavy metals. Okay, but when like, try going with uh, iron. Yeah. Or uh, many of our electrolytes, mm -hmm. many of our, many things that make our nervous system and our muscles work. Oh, at least our nervous system yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. So I mean, it's understand you are metals, and and so everybody has metals in them, and everybody, as Dr. Gates said, is exposed to them. I think the hair analysis thing is like, right, very tenuous to to say the least. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's a it's a yeah, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> so now yeah, it's a good analogy. I yeah, thought. Okay, good. So now everybody tests positive as having heavy metal toxicity. Everybody. And when, and when this goes to the scientific literature, you have to understand that it comes up against voracious uh, criticism and a lot of ire because the researchers who are very scientific are like, everybody has heavy metal toxicity when you do the test this way. Right. And so do heavy metals cause problems? Yes, they can cause problems. We've seen it. And Dr. Rutherford talked about the chelation, uh, the gal who went through the chelation. But we've seen other patients, and as Dr. Rutherford was saying before this, one of the best ways to detect heavy metal toxicity is actually to do a neurological exam because there are clear-cut signs that will manifest if you have lead toxicity. There are clear-cut signs if you have mercury toxicity. If it's you copper. have arsenic poisoning, yeah, all these things, yeah, copper, uh, copper and zinc deficiencies, things like that will definitely show through a neurological exam. So that's why it's so important to look at a patient clinically and not just based on the test. And I will say there's not a fantastic way to test for heavy metals. And that's why the neurological exam seems to be the most important way out of anything to do it. Just using mercury as an example. If somebody is thought to have a mercury toxicity and they go to one of our medical neurology uh, colleagues, they're gonna get a blood uh, mercury test. Well, the blood mercury test isn't good either because that's not very sensitive or specific. And then you have the test that we're talking about, the pre and post provocative challenge, and that's not sensitive or specific. So there's no good way to test for heavy metals. But the reality is you gotta look at the person's history. Have you been exposed to heavy metals? And I get it, we get it. Flu vaccines have heavy metals. Other vaccines used to have heavy metals, the mercury amalgams. But again, look at it clinically. And the other thing I would say is, is we also could speak from from clinical observations, okay? Yeah. Because we've been, I was looking the other day. I think we were, we're up on like thirty eight thousand patients that have come to this clinic over a period of time. So we've had a lot of people that we not we haven't treated all those, but we've consulted a, a substantial portion of of the ones that were in our chronic pain aspect of the clinic. And so I, for that example, with that one patient. Uh, the, the key was her husband was working in the mine. She was she was watching his clothes. She apparently got a reaction to the heavy metals. But I would add, these people who already have who have heavy metals, to my observation, already are compromised hosts. Mm -hmm. They already have a vulnerability to have their immune system responses because they either already have an immune system problem. That young lady had Hashimoto's. And I, I, did she have rheumatoid arthritis? Or was it mm -hmm. Type one diabetes. Type one diabetes. That's what it was. So she already had. So she already had an autoimmune problem. And and so I think that's the next thing. Uh, I know there's been theories out there like if you already have an autoimmune problem and the antibody, then then you're more likely for the antibodies to hit the metal and have that. Apparently, that's not a real clear, clearly um, proven theory. But I would say I do think that. If you're what we find in people who come in and they say this happened on January 9th, uh, you know, uh, 1987, and I had my mercury taken out. It's the same thing as me hearing this happened on January 9th, 1987. I had a car accident. This happened on January 9th, 1987. I had a baby. I had a, I had I would I was stressed. My husband let me know that he was having an affair. 
and on and on and on and on. So to me, my observation and listening to all this is that usually the patient who does respond and have a heavy metal burden, that is, that is part of their clinical picture, would seem to me to already be compromised in some way. Maybe they're in post-traumatic stress syndrome, chronic fight, flight, sympathetic dominance. If you've watched us, you would know what that is. If not, we have a lot of talks mm -hmm. online about that. But that's just an observation. Right. It's not anything that's in the literature, but it's something that, that my ears go up when a person puts a date down. Because I'm always going to hear the history from that date on. And then as soon as they're done, I'm going to say, so how were you beforehand? And they're always like, well, I did have this and I did have that. And, and there's usually an autoimmune immune or chronic pain component there. Now, is that a fact? I'm, I don't know. I'm just sharing with you what we've seen. Okay, so. I agree completely. Okay, yeah. And so I, I guess the crux of the argument is you can do all these other things to prevent having to go through the heavy metal detox, which of course there are stories of people where it works for them, like you've talked about. Get all the mercury well, comes out, they felt really well, or you yeah, had that case that we were discussing. That one. <laughs> but also keep in mind, if it doesn't work, then what do you do? And the chelation treatments are not cheap. So that's where we just want to get this information out there because uh, a lot of people think, oh my gosh, my test is positive for lead or bismuth or mercury, and that that's my problem. In our experience, most of the time, that's not the problem. Okay. Not saying never. You're saying what's correct. Not saying never. Yeah. Okay. I think that covers it. Yeah. If uh, you have any other questions, you can go to powerhealthtalk.com. If you want us to talk about a subject, just send it to us in the comments sub, uh, section, and we appreciate you watching.